guys this is Mobin we are talking about cardiovascular system embryology. The lecture today is about the pharyngeal arch arteries and their fate. So what will happen is this let us look at the final structure what we will understand we will develop and then we will go back to where we started and how this would happen. So look this is the final structure in an adult that is formed and that is that this is aorta this is pulmonary trunk or pulmonary arteries, artery, trunk and arteries. This is the subclavian on the left side. This is subclavian on the right side. This is brachiocephalic trunk, trunk, common carotid, common carotids, here, common carotids, then external carotid. and internal carotids here and here internal carotids. Did I leave anything? No, the common carotid here and so a couple of things that you should keep in mind when trying to understand the embryology here. One is I think we all know that the left side the common carotid is a direct branch of the arch of aorta. On the right side the common carotid is taking off from the brachiocephalic artery. Second is that the recurrent laryngeal nerve, so this is the vagus nerve, this is the vagus nerve. On the right side the recurrent laryngeal nerve hooks, the vagus should have been a little bit on this side, hooks under the subclavian and then it goes towards the larynx. So this is the recurrent laryngeal. But on the left side the recurrent laryngeal hooks around the ligamentum arteriosum and then goes to the larynx. So on one side it is under the arch of aorta and on the other side it is under the subclavian artery. So recurrent laryngeal nerve, this is vagus and this is recurrent laryngeal nerve. Okay, so we have to keep these anomalies in our mind that how did this happen that the common carotid on the left side is direct branch of the aorta and how did the recurrent laryngeal nerve get trapped under the arch of aorta versus the subclavian artery. So now let us see how does this all develop. So what happens is as the embryo is developing we, uh, we have talked in the previous lectures that there are dorsal aorta that are developing that would be giving off branches to, um, to oxygenate or to bring blood and nutrition to the anterior and, and dorsal part of the embryo. So these are those dorsal aorta, two dorsal aorta so I will just write DA here and here. Okay, so <coughs> Truncus arteriosus is here, aortic sac is here. Now what happens is that the, there are pharyngeal arteries that develop as part of this pharyngeal arches. There are six total arteries that develop. So please now note it down somewhere. The first two develop by third or fourth week and the last, the sixth pair develops near the sixth week or seventh week. By the time the sixth pair develop what is important is to note that the first and second pair have degenerated. So the, all the six pairs of pharyngeal arch arteries are not present at the same time. First two would de degenerate they will make maxillary and the stapedial arteries they will parts of those other than that they would be uh, degenerating. It is the third pharyngeal arch artery that is really important. This is the one that is going to make the common carotids and internal carotids with 
the dorsal aorta after this. So, this part of the dorsal aorta here would combine with these uh, third pharyngeal arch arteries and become the part of internal carotid. The fourth pharyngeal arch artery would create a rudimentary structure, we will talk about it in a second. Fifth is mostly regressed and degenerated. Sometimes it develops and then degenerates, sometimes it just does not develop at all. And then the sixth one is something that would make the ductus arteriosus on the left side and it would regress on the right side. So, let us very quickly look at a table or, or visualize a table in our mind. On the right side, first one, second one, fifth and sixth will regress. First, second, fifth and sixth would regress. So, all we have to talk about on the right side is what happens to third and fourth. These are what we have to talk and third is simple common carotid and internal carotid, fourth is simple as well proximal part of the subclavian, we will see that in a second. On the left side, similar situation, first and second would regress, five would regress, third, fourth and sixth would do the function, third, fourth and sixth will, will form structures. Of course, the third would make common carotid and internal carotid, fourth will make part of the arch of aorta, we will see that in a second and sixth will become the ductus arteriosus. So, look at this structure and now let us go here. What happens is, remember the first two pharyngeal arch arteries have gone they went away. Third one is connected with the dorsal aorta. The dorsal aorta between the third, fourth and onwards, they got degenerated. So, now third is connected directly with the dorsal aorta. Then these pharyngeal arch arteries, third are connected with the aortic sac. So, this is aortic sac. Aortic sac below was connected with the truncus arteriosus, which in this case, if you see this is aortic sac as well, which is de, uh, separating out here. So, what is it separating into, um, the, the diagram is a little bit wicked, but anyways, what is happening is that the truncus arteriosus would separate into aorta and, and the pulmonary trunk. So, this is that part, this is that dividing truncus arteriosus aorta and this is the pulmonary trunk. So, pulmonary trunk initial part is made by the truncus arteriosus. Then the later part, the pulmonary arteries or you can say proximal parts of the pulmonary artery are made by the sixth pharyngeal arch artery, which also connects this, the uh, pulmonary arch artery, sorry pulmonary artery on the left side to the aorta. So, this is the ductus arteriosus, ductus arteriosus. And what is this and what is this? These are the dorsal aorta as well. So, dorsal aorta here, remember they were fusing down here. So, instead of fusing, this dorsal aorta here in this vicinity became regressed as well. So, what is left here is going to become the subclavian artery. This one dorsal aorta is going to become the subclavian artery. So, on the right side, sorry, on the left side, the dorsal aorta are making the arch descending aorta and part of the arch of aorta. On the right side, the aorta is coming from the truncus arteriosus and the right dorsal aorta is becoming the subclavian artery. Now, what will happen is that this third pharyngeal arch and the aortic sac would start dividing like this and the end result will be that there will be the brachiocephalic trunk that would develop on the right side. From that trunk will be the common carotid. So, the third pharyngeal arch artery will make common carotid and part of the internal carotid on both sides, common carotid and part of the internal carotid. However, this division would separate them and the third pharyngeal on the left side will become part of the branch of the aortic arch. On the right side, this third will continue with the dorsal aorta here and then separate out and here will be a new branch on the aorta and that would be the brachiocephalic trunk. So, this is what would happen. 
see this is the brachiocephalic trunk and then this is the common serrated and this is the subclavian. again. So, if you look at this structure and come here, this is that structure. So, to the aorta, there will be a new structure here that is the brachiocephalic trunk. So, that is the structure that would develop. Keep an eye on the ductus arteriosus. Ductus arteriosus has a muscular structure in it which after birth will become uh, contracted and it would obliterate the ductus arteriosus. Sometimes the muscular tissue from here shifts into the aorta and when after birth the ductus arteriosus contracts, that part of aorta also contracts and creates a constriction which is called the aortic coarctation. So, we will talk about that in a second. So, now with this structure, let us go here and see what thing comes from where. This is the pulmonary artery. So, the beginning part of the pulmonary artery is truncus arteriosus. Beginning part of the ascending aorta is also truncus arteriosus. These are coming from here, not from here. This is the dorsal aorta on the right side, it would become subclavian. On the, on the left side, it becomes the descending aorta. So, this is dorsal aorta. The sixth, sixth pharyngeal arch artery will make proximal parts of the pulmonary artery and some part of the trunk, but more importantly the ductus arteriosus on the left side. On the right side, the rest of the six would be um, that would go away, degenerate and there, there is no further connection, but on the left side it is, it is existing. And because of this existence of the ductus arteriosus, which is the remnant of or which is the sixth pharyngeal arch artery, recurrent laryngeal gets stuck under this. On the right side, because this sixth pharyngeal arch artery disappeared, recurrent laryngeal went up. So, here this sixth got the recurrent laryngeal stuck and over here the recurrent laryngeal would be pulled up. So, on the right side, the recurrent laryngeal is under the subclavian while on the left side recurrent laryngeal is under the ductus arteriosus or under the arch of aorta because of non-regression of ductus arteriosus, which is the sixth pharyngeal arch. Now, continuing with the aorta, what happens is aorta is primarily made by the aortic sac, the arch of aorta. However, the part before the common carotid, this part is made by fourth pharyngeal arch. So, imagine here now on the brachiocephalic trunk, the part before the common carotid is this, right? This is also fourth. This is also fourth. Subclavian by dorsal aorta, here dorsal aorta. This subclavian does not, on the left side the subclavian does not come from the dorsal aorta, it is an independent new, it is vasculogenesis or actually angiogenesis. Vasculogenesis is when the blood vessel is formed where, where there is no existing vessel. Angiogenesis is when there is a branch formed where there was no blood vessel before, but there was an existing vessel from which the branch occurred and made a new branch. Now, common carotid on both sides common serrated here, common serrated here, third, third, internal carotid also third. However, let distal part of the internal carotid dorsal aorta, dorsal aorta. So, what is left? We have gotten that. This is all dorsal aorta now. So, this is the development of the pharyngeal arch arteries and the development of the aorta. Now, let us very quickly talk about the pathology, one important pathology here and that is the coarctation of aorta. So, the coarctation of aorta is of two types. I am going to draw a line here and talk about coarctation of aorta here, coarctation of aorta. Guys, coarctation of aorta, two types of coarctations of aorta or contraction of the aorta. How does, first of all, how does the coarctation of aorta occurs? What happens is that during the development, the ductus arteriosus has contractile tissue in it. 
it has muscular tissue which will contract later on when the baby is born. That contractile tissue sometimes makes its way into the arch of aorta. So the muscles of the ductus arteriosus end up in the arch of aorta. So after birth, when the ductus arteriosus contracts, so does the muscle as well and the coarctation occur. But there are sometimes just developmental abnormalities in which there is a constriction. So here are two abnormalities that are interesting. One is post ductal coarctation. coarctation. So here is the duct, ductus arteriosus. I will make it red here. And after this is the coarctation. This one is preductal. Here the duct is present here and before the duct there is coarctation of aorta. Now what happens in both cases the outcomes are different. So let us look at this. In the case of preductal coarctation, or this is postductal coarctation, coarctation after the duct, while the baby is being formed, while it is an embryo, the body of the baby needs the blood supply and there is a coarctation. So what happens is collateral channels would develop. What are those collateral, collateral channels? The left subclavian, the left subclavian would, of course it has a branch inter internal thoracic, internal thoracic and intercostal would create collaterals to supply the lower body of the baby. So that is one way, of course on the right side as well because it is bilaterally deficient because of this coarctation. So subclavian, internal, intercostal, internal thoracic and intercostal vessels make the or arteries make the um, anastomosis. Preductal coarctation is that there is coarctation or contraction before the duct. In this case, the ductus arteriosus stays patent and it keeps pumping blood which is going to go into the lower body. But the problem is after birth, there are two issues. One, this blood is cyanosis, would cause cyanosis because it is the deoxygenated blood. Secondly, ductus arteriosus is going to close down. So what you got to do as a doctor is as soon as you figure this out that this is happening, you have to give prostaglandins to keep the ductus arteriosus open. Now in the case where you want the ductus arteriosus to close and that is not this situation, but in any situation where ductus arteriosus is patent, you heard the machinery murmur, you want it to be closed, you give anti prostaglandins which are NSAIDs, that means endomethacin, that means ibuprofen. Even ibuprofen is actually almost equally as effective as the endomethacin. So these are prostaglandins or anti prostaglandins depending upon what you want to do with the um, with the um, ductus arteriosus. Thank you very much.